I swear, I leave the internet for one month and then everybody's gotta get so creative. From dirty wine glass pasta to cheesy pickle roll-ups and cold jellied chocolate noodles, what are we doing? Today though, I'm gonna be trying some of these recipes out myself and seeing if I'm the crazy one and these are all just strokes of genius. Starting with that griddled pickle in a cheesy blanket for our appetizer and following that up with some lasagna stew. And for desserts, as I showed you earlier, those nasty jellied looking chocolate wormy noodles. As always, all the original links to these recipes are down in the description. Go give some props to these uber creative chefs. And let's just get right into this one. I figured that we would start today off strong with probably the most viral TikTok ever since I left. There are countless videos with millions of views. This one I've been showing you has about four and a half itself. And if you are deranged enough to want to recreate this, you will need some pickles and some cheese. I don't know about you guys, but the first time I ever laid my eyes on this creation, um, I had a range of thoughts starting with which four month old pregnant lady came up with this and or did this come from a city with a surplus of cheese and pickles because these ain't cheap ingredients anymore. And the fact that I usually try to avoid applying straight heat onto cheeses like cheddar, whether that be in the microwave or on a stovetop because it causes it to separate and you get a pretty gnarly visual as to how much straight oil is in every single bite of cheddar cheese that you eat. It's pretty hard to believe, and I don't know the exact percentage, but just on this alone, it's gotta be between 20 and 35% of its total mass. But just like the videos, I got my cheese crispy, I folded it around a few pickles, and I guess now's the time I have to eat it. God damn it. I was trying to get a thumbnail and that was almost catastrophic. Initial reactions. There are certain recipes, I just, I don't really know what to think of them. This being one of them. I will say the pickles or something, presumably the pickles, got a little bit of funk to them. I can't really place it, but they definitely have some kind of really strong fermenty kind of scent happening. So I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you guys. Um, clearly, I kind of like this. I think it's probably the combination of how fatty and rich the cheese is in addition to how like um, vinegary and acidic and almost sharp the pickles are. It does make a very nice pairing and who doesn't love a real like crunchy kind of lacy piece of cheddar cheese too. Would I ever make this again? Um, probably not. I can't imagine a time where I would. Unless maybe these were the last two things in my house, then I might wake it again. But much better than I expected. I, I ate a half of the damn thing, so I can't hate on it too much. Next up for our main course today, we are revisiting an old friend's TikTok page, Al Dante Diva. I believe we've done two or three recipes from her now, and today we will be testing out her lasagna soup. And to make it, you will need some lasagna sheets and olive oil, beef and chicken broth, as well as some garlic powder and tomato sauce, ricotta cheese and Alfredo sauce, diced tomatoes, Italian seasoning, dried oregano and sweet sausage, ground beef, mozzarella cheese, Parmesan, salt and pepper, and some fresh basil. Now this one got sent to me a couple of different times by a couple different creators. I just picked this one because it looked the most interesting, the most appetizing, and the fact that it has a half a million views doesn't hurt too much either. I started by grating up some Parmesan cheese as well as the mozzarella that's gonna get combined with the ricotta cheese, a little salt and pepper, and the dried oregano. I wanted to get all that out of the way first because this is a one pot recipe. I was very happy to see that. Once our heat flicks on, every single ingredient is gonna go into this single pot, which will be the final one too. There's no boiling pasta off to the side, cooking off a tomato sauce or anything like that. So as I said, this is pretty straightforward. This thing starts with a pound of ground beef as well as two sausages that get browned up, seasoned heavily with the salt and pepper and oregano and garlic, and then topped off with a ton of tomato sauce. This is 32 ounces. Four cups of our stock, that's two cups each of the chicken and beef. And can I just say, I was also drawn to this because of her use of ricotta cheese. I've said this in the past, but I just love ricotta in lasagna. I know a bechamel is much more traditional and maybe common throughout the world, but it's what I grew up with and I just love it in anything, lasagna or even pasta related. 
I will say the overall workflow is a little bit questionable with this. For one, I don't know why we're using Alfredo sauce. If this was me, I would have just been using some heavy cream or maybe even a little butter to uh, gloss this up and add a little richness. Maybe she just didn't have those on hand. But also, why are we dumping in Parmesan cheese into a boiling hot liquid and then creating a separate mixture of the ricotta herbs and mozzarella to then slowly dollop in at the end. I feel like that's also probably when Parmesan should go in here because as we know, if you put a cheese like a Parmesan in a very hot liquid, like if you're trying to make a cheese sauce, you're asking for a disaster. It's gonna separate and get all oily and then clump to the bottom of the pan and your spoon. So if I were to make this again, I would just use it as a garnish or just wait until the very end when we pull this off of the heat. All in all though, I am extremely excited for this. I have very high hopes especially once I got this plated up and garnished off with a little bit more of the ricotta mixture as well as some basil and parm. I know I'm biased, but this thing looks like it could be on a magazine cover somewhere. I think it looks super good, so let's give it a try. It's always hard to show you guys um, very liquid foods like soups and other stuff down here. Um, so I run the risk of dumping it all over my desk. Mm. Oh yeah. This is incredible. I love so many different things about this, primarily the flavor. It is extremely tasty with those dried and fresh herbs. It's got that fatty, salty richness that I crave. I love the different shapes of the noodles. Obviously that's gonna happen when you just kinda snap lasagna sheets. Once again, I love the ricotta in this. It is so much better than bechamel in my opinion, I'm sorry. I would kinda describe it as like a tomato soupy stroganoff lasagna hybrid, almost like an elevated Chef Boyardee in the best way, if you've ever had one of those. I love it though. I'm gonna devour this entire thing. I will be making this many more times for future dinners. 10 out of 10, she absolutely killed this one. And for the last course today, from our good old buddy, Zach Choi over on TikTok, it is the infamous squirm triggering chocolate noodles. And you will need some milk and sugar and some gelatin and dark chocolate. Immediate issue as I go to tackle this one, as with all of Zach's wonderful creations, there is no recipe, there's no instructions, there's no measurements. I don't even know if these are the ingredients that he uses. I'm assuming they are based on how they look and what he ends up making. I think there might even be a fifth ingredient, another powder. I don't know if it was a flavoring like a milk powder or vanilla sugar. It could be an additional setting up agent like an agar or a pectin, who knows. I'm at least very confident that he uses these four. So I'm gonna put my best foot forward, kind of use my history and knowledge and the internet and see if I can get something even close to what he got. I decided to use one bar of chopped up dark chocolate. It's about four ounces. I used two cups of milk and dissolved into our warm milk first will be my favorite ingredient of all time to use, two packs of nasty unflavored gelatin and about one and a half tablespoons of sugar. Don't ask me why, it just kind of felt right. We gotta address the next big issue, which is the tubing. Unfortunately, I discovered that the tubing that came with my syringes would have been way too small. I mean, these things would be thinner than angel hair noodles. For an already difficult recipe, I don't think those are gonna be the move. So I scoured all the different stores around me and found this tubing, which I thought might be perfect because it seems like the perfect diameter. It's food grade because it is used for refrigerators and freezers, that little water feed. And somehow, luckily, my large syringe fits in the end of this perfectly. It's a perfect airtight seal. So things are looking up here. I filled up my syringe with my slightly cooled down mixture. I piped this in here, which was a wild sight. I can't really think of too many adjectives to describe this thing, really. And once I got the entire thing filled up to the best of my ability, I submerged it in some ice water and stuck it in the fridge for an hour to hopefully let this thing completely harden and set up fully. I wanna give this the best chance at working possible. About an hour later is when I began what proved to be the rest of my hell day. Um, I started by trying to syringe out my noodles. Of course, just with an empty syringe, this thing was not budging for anything. I then basically tried every possible thing I could think of. I tried to use my mouth since, you know, I used to be a trumpet player and I should have a pretty strong blow. Once again, did not budge at all. I tried to snip off little 10 inch strips, which would be the perfect noodle size and no, nothing. What did end up coming out was like millimeters at a time. I mean, this would not be possible, especially for as many noodles as I want to create. Oh! 
So I got the genius idea to pull out my last resorts, my incredibly heavy duty industrial air compressor down from the basement, and oh. So yeah, this whole thing was miserable. I don't know what kind of wizardry Zach Choi possesses that he can make stuff like this. And yes, before you ask, I did scour the internet looking for other recipes and any help I could find at all. There is nothing. I guess these TikTokers have reached a level of uniqueness and creativity that nobody else in human history has. But yeah, by this point, I was very over this. At the beginning of this, I was thinking about giving this multiple attempts because I figured I wouldn't get it on my first try, but I've been at this for hours. My kitchen's destroyed. It's all over me. I've had it today. I think this looks great. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder after all. It looks elegant, like a modern art piece. All jokes aside, I think my mixture itself might have actually been close uh, because obviously most of the noodles uh, set up and stay together. I think this splattering liquid was just because of too much air. This could just be me, but I feel like these look like even more wormish than Zach's do. I don't want to eat this. It actually tastes fine. The sugar and the chocolate mask the gelatin flavor. You gotta get past the texture though, because that is not pleasant. I have never once in life finished a meal and then sat there and said, you know what I'm feeling? Some cold, wet, chewy, slick chocolate noodles. Just eat the damn chocolate bar, please. Uh, save yourself the mess and the headache. Thank you all so much for watching though. I have a lot of cleaning to do. I'm gonna get to that right now, so peace.